G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Meter here. You can probably tell that I've been pretty busy obliterating terrain in my own version of nuclear testing. Fortunately, there are no test ban treaties for Minecraft. But something I got to do recently was participate in one of Sip Over Civilization events. And something I felt I had to do was build the Orbital Strike Cannon on the server and express technological superiority over our adversaries. So I dumbed down the design with cheaper materials and got into building the Orbital Strike Cannon, which took about two hours. When it was finished, it had some surprising results which you'll need to wait to see in Sipover's video. If you're unfamiliar with the Orbital Strike Cannon, I'll strongly suggest you look at my previous videos about the design and how it progressed into a cannon that can literally launch nukes at any location in your Minecraft world. After having used the Orbital Strike Cannon in survival, I got to learn about a couple of ways in which it can be improved. For example, the cannon is pretty accurate, but it turns out that even a slight lack of precision can mean the difference between a guaranteed kill and just knocking a player about. There is also the issue of the controls for the cannon being in the overworld, which is the one place the player can't be if you're firing the cannon. So all you can do is sit and wait in the nether for the cannon to finish firing, and if at any point you get impatient and experience a lapse in judgement, then you end up instantly blowing up the cannon. So with all that in mind, let me introduce you to the Orbital Strike Cannon 4.0. The 1.0 being this abomination, the 2.0 being the original Nuclear Strike Cannon, and 3.0 being a version that we skipped on the way to the new and improved design. So what improvements do we have on the latest iteration of the design? Well, we've replaced these puny 3 TNT dupers with these much larger 10 TNT dupers. This additional TNT is also combined with more efficient alignment making use of a stone cutter, which allows the TNT to maintain a slightly higher feet height, which puts it almost precisely in line with the explosion origin of the accelerating TNT. With the combined effects of more TNT and a more efficient alignment for the TNT, we obtained roughly four times the charging speed for the cannon. Another important change is that you might notice that you can no longer input the settings in the overworld side, and the interface has been replaced with this long snaking dropper line which enables the settings to be imported from the nether in item form. All of the important settings of the cannon are now accessible from the nether side, meaning you don't even need to go to the cannon in the overworld. So we can find ourselves a set of coordinates, punch those coordinates into our fire control spreadsheet, punch those settings straight into the cannon through items in a chest minecart, which then get transported to the overworld side and loaded into the cannon. With the result being substantially more accurate than the previous design. You might also notice that the new Excel spreadsheet allows you to input multiple coordinates because now we can schedule multiple settings to be loaded into the cannon one after the other and fired automatically. So now you can rain a barrage of destruction on your near peer adversaries with single block precision. Those are the new and improved capabilities of the Orbital Strike Cannon 4.0. So how do you go about actually setting up the cannon for yourself? Well first of all, you want to find yourself a location fairly far away from the playable area such that other players on your server don't accidentally load the cannon. For example, I'm around 4,000-4,000 in my creative world, but realistically you want to pick somewhere within 10,000 blocks of the location you actually want to use the cannon. The cannon actually includes this flying machine, which will allow you to conceal it beneath the ground. But also be aware that you'll have to include some powdered snow, which will be the release point of the payload. The cannon will perform best with this powdered snow positioned around 200 to 300 blocks in the air. And keep in mind that the greater the distance between the cannon and this powdered snow, the more time you will add waiting for the flying machine to carry the payload up to the top between shots. When building the cannon, you want to be very careful that you properly chunk align the cannon so that the chunk loading grid is perfectly aligned to the chunk borders like so. A really annoying detail of the chunk alignment is that in order to get the nuclear payload to work, 
you have to make absolutely sure that the entire payload duper does not cross a subchunk boundary. So what is a subchunk boundary? Well a chunk is a 16 by 16 vertical column and a subchunk is a 16 block tall section of that column. So if you have a look in my top left, you'll see my subchunk coordinates. If I cross a subchunk boundary, you'll see those subchunk coordinates change. And you want to make sure that wherever you position the cannon, if you move along the payload duper, that coordinate should not change. I know this seems like a very annoying step to throw at you, but unfortunately it is what it is and we just have to work around it. For your convenience, I've included in the schematic this force shutdown, which is enabled by default to prevent systems from clocking while you're building. You want to make absolutely sure that once you've finished building the cannon, you first hit this remote setting reset like so, and then turn off the force shutdown. Once you have built the cannon, you want to go ahead and grab the origin of the cannon, which is this orange glass block right here and divide the x and z coordinates by 8 which for my example gives us the coordinates 500 500 then if we go to the nether we want to go ahead and load up the schematic for the orbital strike nether and place the origin of this schematic at those coordinates that we calculated so once you have the coordinates of the nether side aligned to the coordinates of the overworld side, you can build it at whatever height you feel conceals it the best. For simplicity, I'll just put it right here above the nether roof, so everything's easily visible. An important detail is that we will be using items to not only tell the machine where we want to shoot the payload, but also what type of payload we want to shoot. This is because I've gone ahead and slapped on additional payload encoders allowing us to tell the machine which specific payload you want to send to each specific target. I've gone ahead and renamed the items to make it crystal clear what each item encodes. However, if you feel that renaming the items is too much effort, you can simply just use different items that you can recognize as being each control and that would also suffice. What each item encodes is simply controlled by which one of these item filters the item is put into. In the nether side we also have these two controls which control the chunk loading which you want to make sure is active if you intend to use the cannon as well as the auto firing mechanism. Something I should probably mention is that you have to be extremely careful when using the cannon with auto firing inactive. The benefit of disabling this option is that it gives you precise control over when you launch the payload. So for example, I have Steve right here ready to drop this item through the portal, at which point it will load the overworld side of the cannon and immediately launch the payload. Let's go ahead and teleport to the overworld coordinates where we'll be hitting. And pretty much the instant that Steve drops that item through the portal, we are destroyed by an orbital laser. But if I prepare a shot with auto firing inactive and simply forget to launch it, the payload will linger in stasis above the cannon for all eternity until some point at which the cannon is unloaded or maybe the game is restarted. The payload will still be there, but all of its velocity will be gone and it will simply blow up the cannon. So make absolutely sure that you do not forget to launch any active payloads that might be lingering as a result of auto firing being inactive. Or if you just want to blow stuff up and don't want to have to worry about when that stuff is blown up, just activate auto firing and then the cannon will sort things out for you. Let's designate targets in this medieval village designed and built by Spay. To designate targets, you want to grab yourself the block coordinates of each target and then punch these coordinates into the Excel spreadsheet that I provided. So what we have here is the origin of the cannon, which for us is 4000 4000. Then we can designate multiple targets and the spreadsheet will automatically calculate the settings of the cannon in order to hit each one of these coordinates. We can also input the payload type either being a stab charge or a nuke charge at this stage, which will vary the estimated firing time for each shot. 
If we compare the target coordinates with the origin of the cannon, we can see we're only firing about 300 blocks, and as a result, the firing time of the cannon is dominated by simply preparing the stab charge instead of charging the TNT to fire over that distance. This is exemplified by the fact that if we switch to a nuke payload, the nuke takes much longer to prepare than the stab charge because it's a much more complicated payload. We can demonstrate the nuke later, but for now let's keep it simple as just stab charges. In order to input settings into the cannon, you want to grab the count and the trim for the X and Z directions respectively. Then we want these settings to be reflected in the item counts that we put into this chest cart. So for example, our first payload has an X trim of 7, and then an X count of 31, which is split into the decimal values by each one of these items. So for 31, we want 1 and 1, 2, 3, and this will create 31 and a trim of 7. For the Z direction, we have a trim of 1, 2, 3, and then a count of 41. Finally, we want to finish this off with the type of payload, which is a stab charge. Then we can throw these items into the chest cart and hit this note block to load the chest cart into the cannon. It's important to note that the cannon has not started the firing sequence yet because we've got more payloads that we want to actually assign. For the next payload, we have a trim of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then a count of 31 again. For the Z direction, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then a count of 37. And once again, we want to grab ourselves the stab charge, throw the items into the chest cart, and then stack it on to the previous settings. You can just keep slapping on additional settings and they'll simply stack together in this minecart unstacker which will eventually load all the settings into the cannon one by one as it goes to fire them. There we go, that is the last setting that we have defined in our spreadsheet. And now if we want to start the sequence we actually need to hit this note block. So let's hit it and take the cannon for a spin. The first payload settings is sent to the cannon in the overworld, and immediately we get a strong indication to avoid using the portals for the time being. Carefully watching the cannon in the overworld using the game rule spectators generate chunks false, we can watch the cannon go through its routine of building the payload and then charging it with momentum. Eventually the flashing lights will stop, telling us that it's safe to go to the overworld. Now, an important note is that because we've had auto-firing inactive, all of the payloads have simply been piling up at the overworld waiting for us to load the cannon. So, if we wanted to fire all the payloads at once, all we would need to do is chuck an item through this portal, or actually go through the portal with our player, loading the overworld side and sending the payloads shooting over to their target destination. But what we're going to do is tick freeze, like so, go straight to the overworld, and we should actually be able to see all of our payloads waiting to be launched. We step forward a tick, we can watch as all the TNT flies off into the void. If we follow the TNT, we arrive at the target destination with all of the payloads spread out at that target coordinates. If we unfreeze, they instantly detonate and destroy their designated targets. Precision stab charges are great for eliminating small targets. However, this medieval village is still standing strong and has yet to bear witness to the fires of Prometheus. So let's load up a cluster of nukes, enable auto firing, and watch the utter carnage of not one but multiple nukes overlapping on a single target. And if that's not enough carnage for you, you can always bump up the item count in this dropper counter and obtain an even larger explosion radius. So 
But always bear in mind that with a bigger bomb comes a bigger cost to performance. So that is the new and improved Orbital Strike Cannon 4.0. Be sure to check out the description for a schematic and world download of the design so you can try it out yourself. And if you appreciate the effort I put into improving the design, be sure to drop a like and subscribe to be notified about future content. And on to news about me, in two days I'll be graduating with my university degree. Which means I'll finally be a qualified mechanical engineer and physicist. And in four days I'll be hanging with some fellow technical Minecraft players at this year's Redstone Awards at... Uh... 3am on a Monday morning? Well, looks like I'll be having one hell of a weekend. Thank you all very much for watching and I will see you next time.